Japan today is a nation of contrast in traditional and modern patterns of life. This man's home and garden, for example, reflect the traditional world of old Japan. Here he enjoys the culture and customs of Japan's past. But he is also a citizen of modern Japan, which has adopted much of Western dress, as well as many of the patterns and conveniences of Western culture. Our businessman city, Tokyo, is a commercial and industrial one, whose downtown streets indicate how modern Japan has become. Japan itself is an archipelago of four main islands and many smaller islands. It is separated by water from the mainland of Asia. Tokyo, Japan's modern capital, is the cultural and governmental center where the two worlds of modern Japan and traditional Japan exist side by side. Shintoism is the traditional religion of Japan. This Shinto shrine was built in the late 19th century by the Emperor Meiji, under whose reign Japan became a modern nation. Today, the present emperor spends much of his time at the Imperial Palace, one of the most popular tourist attractions of the capital. Situated opposite and high above this moat, the emperor's palace is a symbol of Japan's imperial tradition. This tradition, it is believed, extends back to the earliest period of Japanese history, when culture and civilization were very simple. From such a rude hut as this, the first Japanese emperor is said to have begun to rule in 660 BC. But there were probably no strong rulers until about 250 AD. These first emperors ruled a people whose homes were simple and whose lives were sustained by wet rice agriculture. During this period of early cultural development, the Japanese believed that powerful and unusual elements of nature, including certain mountains, trees, rocks, waters, and men, contained godlike spirits. Some of these spirits, called kami, were stronger than others. For instance, a particularly strong spirit dwelt on the slopes of Mount Fuji, Certain spirits were later enshrined. During this period, kami worship, called Shinto, was developed. In time, large shrines were constructed by powerful clans, or family groups. Chieftains of such clans were aided by Shinto priests, who also became powerful. The religious power of the priests was useful in establishing one of the clan chiefs as hereditary emperor. The emperor headed a centralized government and a court of nobles. During the 5th and 6th centuries AD, the unified state accepted new cultural elements from China. Among these were writing and a new religion, Buddhism. The Buddhist monks from China and Korea proved to be good teachers. The Japanese quickly assimilated the techniques of Chinese arts and crafts. Calligraphy, or the art of writing, was soon adapted and modified to fit Japanese needs. The Japanese also utilized the distinctive Chinese style of architecture. This is one of several temples in Nara, which became the first capital city of Japan in 710 AD. In the next major period of Japanese history, the capital was moved to Heian, later called Kyoto. This is the old imperial palace, similar to the buildings where the emperor and his court lived amid pomp and splendor. The court at Kyoto produced a golden age of art and literature. But toward the end of this period, there was civil war. One reason for this may be pointed out as we watch a recreation of a 10th century imperial procession. Though the emperor was a highly respected figure who traveled in seclusion, surrounded by the pomp of his court, he now possessed little actual political power. 
much greater power was concentrated in the hands of the clans and their chieftains, or nobles, who fought among themselves to gain control of the emperor. The struggles among the nobles finally led to the establishment of a military dictatorship. The military dictator, or shogun, became the real power behind the throne. During the next period of Japanese history, under the absolute rule of the shoguns, trade with other Asiatic nations was increased. Such peaceful trade was interrupted toward the close of the 13th century, when the Mongol emperor Kublai Khan sent a war fleet to invade Japan. The invasion was repulsed, partly because of the effect of a destructive typhoon, which the Japanese thought was the work of the gods of the wind, kamikaze. Three centuries later, winds brought ships from other nations. In the late 16th century, ships from Portugal were the first to bring the products of Western science and technology to Japan. Guns were in especial demand by the Japanese ruling classes. The introduction of firearms caused a revolution in warfare, reflected in a change of architecture. Heavily fortified stone castles were built. Christianity was another influence introduced to Japan during the late 16th century. The later persecution of Christians opened the next period of Japanese history, a time of great unrest. In this period, the shogun moved his headquarters to the city of Edo, later called Tokyo. During this Edo period, the shoguns enforced the isolation of Japan. Western missionaries were expelled. The Japanese people were forbidden to leave the country. But the riches of Japanese trade could not be ignored by the West. In 1853, an American, Commodore Matthew Perry, arrived in Japan with a squadron of warships. Perry had come to persuade the Shogun to open Japan again to the world. In the face of such a display of naval power, the Shogun agreed. In 1854, a trade treaty between Japan and the United States was signed. With 200 years of isolation ended, Japan now entered its period of modern history. Japanese, who had been cut off from the world, saw in Western machines possibilities for an era of thriving industrialization for their country. In the late 19th century, the great emperor Meiji strengthened imperial tradition, ended shogun rule and isolation, and began the amazing modernization of Japan. Great changes in traditional Japanese life were brought about in a single generation. Japan became steadily more industrialized in the closing years of the 19th century. Western educational methods were adopted and many young men upon graduation traveled abroad to attend Western colleges. While many others joined the increasing ranks of Japan's armed forces, Western military techniques were used in building a model Japanese army and navy. The Sino-Japanese War of 1894 showed a surprised world how much Japan had learned from the West. The Japanese quickly defeated the Chinese army and navy and occupied many important Chinese bases. In achieving this victory, Japanese control extended into areas recently claimed by Russia in Northeast Asia. A clash with Russia was inevitable. In 1904, Japan challenged the Russian Empire. The Russians were decisively beaten at sea. Also on land, the Japanese military was victorious. In 1910, Japan annexed Korea. In 1919, following World War I, Japan received the mandate over former German islands in the Pacific area. Many Japanese were proud of their nation's territorial expansion. In 1932 and again in 1936, Military factions took control of the government, and Japan seemed committed to a continued policy of expansion.
propaganda prepared by the fanatical military group began to shape Japanese public opinion. A fierce patriotism and national pride based on the imperial tradition led the Japanese to accept readily what they were told. They were told that large, costly armed forces equal to those of the West were necessary. They were told in the early 1930s that Japan must go to war to secure new markets. They were told that China's actions made it necessary for Japan to control Manchuria and the rest of China. Why not believe these things? Japan's armed forces were winning one victory after another in Manchuria and China. Japan was unopposed. Western nations, unwilling or unable to intercede, stood by as Manchuria and China crumbled. In Europe in 1939, with the start of World War II, Britain and France were mobilizing to battle Germany. On the other side of the world, Japan saw an opportunity to extend her control and influence in Asia. To prevent interference from the United States and her Pacific fleet, on December 7, 1941, Japanese planes severely crippled the U.S. Pacific fleet at Pearl Harbor. Quick initial successes against American forces at other points in the Pacific seemed to assure final victory for the Japanese. But the dreams of victory were to fade. Within four years, defeats replaced the early victories. The end came with stunning swiftness in 1945. Officials representing a defeated nation met with American leaders and signed a treaty of surrender. The war was over. The Japanese people witnessed the occupation of their homeland. Loyalty to the imperial tradition was still unshaken, and when their emperor himself required complete acceptance of the American democratic reforms, the people obeyed. Reconstruction of the war-damaged nation was carried out, and democratic reforms and changes made in government. Today, Japan is once more moving ahead. Traditional ways are gradually disappearing, But in building their future, Japanese still blend the old with the new, binding the traditional and the modern, the two strikingly different themes of the history of Japan.